one thing we learn from, uh, from this testimony in Romans chapter 1 is that the degeneration of the human race is always tied to the rejection of the knowledge of God. Over and over, this is mentioned in Romans chapter 1, and I just want to highlight these verses because God brings this up over and over for a reason, to stress a point. And so he says in Romans 1, 21, because that this is why there is a degeneration, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. See? They rejected the knowledge that the Gentiles had, of course, was what God had written into creation, his eternal power and Godhead. We're clearly seen there, but they did not see it and thus did reject it. Again, he says in the 23rd verse, and they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creepy things. They stopped short in their quest for God and worshiped the creation that was actually made to give us an index into the knowledge of God. And thus, they got worse and worse. In the 25th verse, he says, they changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the, crea the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. And again, in the 28th verse, even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. So we see here what happens at any point when the knowledge of God is rejected. Mm -hmm. There is no way to advance as God requires of us, except through our knowledge of God. And knowledge of God isn't limited to words. It's, it's, it's our fellowship with God that is through the revelation that he has provided. And when that revelation is rejected, there is no way to be productive. Well, the opposite is true, too. If that's true, then productivity is tied to knowing God. In John chapter 15, and we have this over and over, because I assure you that it is not possible to bear fruit unto God except by the means which God has provided. Amen. And that means is the knowledge of God himself. John chapter 15, verse 5, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him the same bringeth forth much fruit. Notice the emphasis on the word abide. There is such thing as a branch in Christ that doesn't bear fruit, but it's someone who doesn't abide and avail themselves yeah. of Christ. Yeah. Just in case you think this fellowship is automatic, he tells you there is such a case. It's abiding in him, and it's not possible, brethren, to abide in Christ Jesus and not be fruitful, or else this, uh -huh. this truth falls to the ground. This is the red letter. This is Jesus telling us what happens when you abide in him. Jesus sees to it that you're Fruitful. Romans chapter 7 and verse 4 says that we are become dead to the law that we might be married to another in order that we might bring forth fruit unto God. God is faithful, brother, by whom you are called into the fellowship of his dear son. Okay? You've been created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath foreordained that you should walk in them. God has planned from the foundation of the world. I don't, I don't want to say how. But that's the best I have right now. How to enable the human race to be productive before him. God is not austere. He's not. He's not asking you to do anything that can't be done according to the preordained purpose that he has set in place. And that purpose centers around his beloved son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Brethren, the bottom line is God has given us a greater revelation than he gave to the Gentile world. They rejected what they had been given, and they went downhill. Now, you've been given a much greater and a much more profound revelation that Gentiles and Jews have had until the gospel began to be unpacked and opened up by Jesus. You're living in the day when the true light now shines, and yet you've got flesh, like Brother Jeremy said, just like Jew and Gentile had in Romans 1 and in Romans 2. All of us have the capacity to neglect Christ and to refuse him that speaks from heaven, okay? And no one can do that with impunity because productivity is tied to the knowledge of God through Christ Jesus. So here is the exhortation that I want to give, and it is this. Make not provision for the flesh. 
because this is what happens when you do. You only get worse. And put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. God's faithful. If you abide with Christ, Christ will see to it that you're fruitful. I know that we say that continually, but you'd be amazed how quickly that kind of truth can escape from you. Both those things. The capacity of the flesh to draw you down and the capacity of Christ to bring you up. Amen. So let's be encouraged to give attendance to both these areas. Yes. And uh, we'll be fruitful before God. Amen. So I open it up for your considerations this morning.